In this video, we're going to look at the change from an anoxic to an oxic atmosphere. We're going to talk about the requirements for complex life, uh, some of the early anaerobic organisms, as well as the early autotrophs that produced the oxygen, uh, what happened to that early oxygen, and the formation of the ozone layer. Firstly, we'll look at the requirements for complex life. So the requirements for complex life are water, oxygen, and protection from the UV radiation from the sun. Now, on the early Earth, there was plenty of water, so we don't have any problems there. There wasn't any oxygen. Now, oxygen is required for respiration in aerobic organisms and had not yet been made. The other thing is that the UV radiation from the sun is because there is no uh, ozone layer, that UV radiation is getting all the way to the surface of the Earth, and this means that the organisms that are around need to be very hardy. They can't be sensitive to that UV light. So these first organisms were prokaryotic, so single cell without a nuclear membrane or membrane-bound organelles. And they were anaerobic, meaning they didn't need any oxygen. And this is important because there wasn't any oxygen for them to actually use. Uh, now, when we talk about oxygen in the atmosphere, we're talking about free oxygen. So oxygen is a diatomic element, uh, meaning that there's two molecules. So O2 is what we're talking about when we talk about free oxygen or oxygen in the atmosphere. Now, there's still uh, anaerobic bacteria, uh, prokaryotic bacteria that live today, uh, but they're not very common and they've far been overtaken by aerobic bacteria. The big thing about aerobic bacteria is that they're able to use oxygen for the process of respiration, which is a very efficient way for them to re release energy from organic molecules. Once these prokaryotic organisms started to produce oxygen or become autotrophic, they started to make their own energy by harnessing the energy from the sun. And as a waste product, they produced oxygen. Now, the earliest record that we have of uh, these autotrophs are cyanobacteria. Now, cyanobacteria have a very primitive form of uh, photosynthesis that occurs in them. And Fossilized evidence of this cyanobacteria in stromatolites dates back about three and a half billion years, so a very long time ago. Now, they were only producing a relatively small amount of oxygen, though. And it wasn't until algae uh, evolved that the atmosphere went from the anoxic to oxic state. So that early oxygen that was produced by the stromatolites and the oxygen that would have been produced by the algae as well, basically wasn't making it into the atmosphere. The first thing that was happening to that oxygen is that it was combining in chemical reactions with the gases that were in the atmosphere. Remember, we've got things like hydrogen and methane in the atmosphere. These are flammable gases. So without oxygen, uh, the lightning causes these gases to produce amino acids, which we've seen in previous videos. However, once you have oxygen there, that lightning basically turns it into a fireball. Uh, so the oxygen would be used up in those reactions. Another way that the oxygen was being used up was in the formation of iron oxide from iron deposits. Rocks form in layers or strata, and some of the oldest rocks that are around on the Earth are around 3.8 million years old. So we can actually see when the rocks went from containing iron that was not uh, bonded with oxygen uh, to iron that was bonded with oxygen in the form of iron oxide. So we can actually date when uh, the Earth moved from an anoxic, so not containing oxygen, to an oxic atmosphere. And this took a long time because basically these two things, the, both the atmosphere and the gases that were there, as well as the iron forming iron oxide, are two really big sinks that were sucking that oxygen out of the atmosphere. It wasn't until 
both of these things were totally saturated with oxygen, that oxygen in its free form, O2, was able to pull and uh, collect in the atmosphere. Once that oxygen started collecting in the atmosphere, the UV radiation from the sun was turning that oxygen into ozone. Now ozone is O3, it consists of three oxygen atoms. Uh, the UV light from the sun is ionizing and splits an O2 into two free oxygen atoms. Now these two free oxygen atoms are very reactive and react with two other oxygen atoms, so O2, to form O3 or ozone. Now ozone absorbs and reflects UV radiation. So what happened is this ozone again increased the amount that it was there and started to form what we now know as the ozone layer. And this ozone layer protected the surface of the earth by absorbing and reflecting that radiation, it's, which allowed more complex and more importantly, more sensitive life to evolve on the earth. So if we recap those requirements of complex life, we started out with water, and we've still got water, which is great. Uh, we also need oxygen. And as I said, oxygen is required for respiration because it's a very efficient reaction. Uh, and that would, oxygen was produced by the autotrophic organisms uh, taking the sun's energy and producing oxygen. Now, what didn't first go into the atmosphere, it took a while to saturate both the rock as well as the reactions that were occurring with the other gases in the atmosphere, but eventually it started pooling in the atmosphere. Once it started pooling, it also produced ozone, and ozone provided that much-needed protection from the sun. So we're now at the point where complex life can start to evolve. In this video, we've looked at the requirements of life being water, oxygen, and protection from UV radiation. We've looked at some of the early anaerobic organisms being organisms that do not require oxygen, uh, which then became autotrophic organisms, being organisms that create their own energy, generally through harnessing the energy of the sun and produce oxygen as a byproduct. Now, they're producing that oxygen, which is being sunk into iron oxide deposits, as well as reacting with the flammable gases in the atmosphere. Uh, once those have been saturated, uh, ozone forms, which creates the ozone layer, protecting the earth and allowing that more complex life to form.